Welcome to Everything Rodeo, where we separate champions from the rest of the crowd. We'll take you down the trail of someone's life, a long haul tour rodeo, and our everyday adventures. So brace yourself, because it's fixing to be a wild ride. We're your hosts, Nace Renfrey and Cody Stanley. Well, back for episode number 22 here in the Cinch Shack at the All-Star uh, Finals. Yeah, uh, eight-time world champion, Rich Skelton. Yes, sir. How y'all doing today? Oh, good. pretty oh, good. Hang on. We got to get an applause for this man. There, you go. there we go. Welcome to the show. You Thank you. <laughs> you know, we just uh, got finished uh, roping the Hillomatic and doing a little demonstration, and really seemed like everybody enjoyed it, so... Uh, uh, Went to a rodeo last night and, you know, went to Lawton and I actually won a little money. So yeah, it's been a good week. My daughter was winning the, ro- the barrel race. So we've had a good week so far. Good. That's awesome. Who was, who'd you rope with over in Lawton? I roped with uh, Bro- uh, oh, Brock Hansen. Brock Hansen. Yes, awesome. Sir. So yeah. you, was, you was healing over there then? Uh huh. Yep. Healing over there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So you, uh, you headed a few uh, this week over here mm-hmm. at the uh, All Star Finals. So. Got your rope a little bit. Um, this has been an awesome finals. Um, you know, All Stars does a whole lot to, you know, do more for the ropers. Like they had you come in and do some uh, clinic yesterday and a clinic today before the short round. And uh, I think that's really cool that, you know, Tim and Blank think enough of their customers to, you know, have you come in. And, you know, that's a probably what a two or $300 value that they're getting for free. You know, the I really, you know, I, I got, I've been there up here a few years ago. They got us to come up and we matched Jake and Clay. Yeah. And it was, uh, you know, it was the first time I'd come to the roping mm-hmm. and got to be around it. And then this spring I did a school up by Blake's house and, and got to know them real good. And I tell you what, you, I love these ropings because you can come mm-hmm. and it's relaxed. They run them good. And, you know, they try to be user friendly. Yeah. And I, I, I've enjoyed the last three days. Just, you know, uh, like say I headed some. I, uh, you know, the, here the other day they lowered my head number. And so I have a really nice horse that belongs to Reliant Ranches. And mm-hmm. shoot, it just, uh, you know, it's fun to head on. And it's fun to do something different besides just heal all the time. Right. Yes, sir. Yeah, you've, you've had to heal for a living your whole life. Mm-hmm. So heading is kind of, you get to kind of relax and just have fun with it. Exactly. You know, when I first started roping, I, I headed, mm-hmm. and I, I was about, oh, 13, 14 years old, and there was, uh, you know, uh, it was the, the whole world changed. Mm-hmm. You know, like when I was uh, when I was growing up, nobody could heal. Yeah. And nowadays, there's to me, there's not Everybody's as much, not as many headers right. yeah. as there was, and now everybody can everybody heal. Everybody heals, yeah. They heal great. Yeah. You know, I just sat here and watched a 10 short go, and these, these kids just, you know, no fear. Just they're healing. dominating. Yeah, all the kids you know. are. Yeah, it seems sure. like all the young young guys have been in here with oh. the interviews, winning all their opens. Uh, unreal how you know how good they they rope now. Yeah. But but like you say, you know they have the technology. Mm-hmm. You know when I started roping, I had a seven sixteenths full with a wire burner. Yeah. And nowadays you sit out here and we watch the goat roping, and you watch these kids in the stands. Mm-hmm. They have a little uh, play rope. They handle a rope so good. Yeah. You know and it's amazing how they you know good they can handle a rope and yeah. and you know they all ride a horse. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, those kids always got a rope in their hand, doing just Something. like trick roping and whatever, mm-hmm. roping their brothers and sisters, whatever. Yeah, so. anything, you know. So it's but it's very it, the tie. It's a, it's kind of cool. I told somebody at the BFI this year when we was at, you know here. I remember when I was uh, roping or you know learning to rope. I w- I couldn't wait till we you know it'd be a, I'd get to Roper Sports News, and it'd be a month later, and. I I just wanted to see the pictures of the best oh, guys yeah. that roped in the world. Yeah. yeah. And now and this year we were sitting out in the parking lot waiting on to run the second one or third one, and we watched it on the phone. Yeah. You know, it's amazing how much everything's changed. Right. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, media is like a huge thing now, especially. I mean, it's just crazy, like going to the rodeos and stuff. They'll play it back as soon as the run's done, you know, in slow motion, and they'll, you know, pinpoint whatever it is. It's crazy. That that's for sure, and you know, and uh, you know the. Uh, you know the horses are better. You know nowadays have YouTube. They yeah. have. You know I I met a kid a few years ago from Mexico, and roped good. Mm-hmm. And he told me that that's how he learned how to rope was YouTube. Yeah. I mean, he didn't didn't know yeah. you know a lot. And 
<clears throat> rope's great. He's an eight and a half or nine now. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and the technology on like the dummies, like when you first started, you had a sawhorse probably. You know, when I you're exactly right, but when when I first started, you know, we didn't like say we did not have a rope like a pull tap roping yeah. machine, mm -hmm. and so if I got to roping bad. I would get off and I'd rope the sawhorse and get back on my horse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and we had a video camera. We had one of them big old boxes that was you put on your shoulder and <laughs> and you know and a big old tape. Right. But uh, you know it. But the thing about it is, it, it didn't matter. You know what happens. You know you, you have to make do. And one thing I've learned over roping over the years is you get out of roping what you put into it. Mm -hmm. You know when you if you you know some people has you know, all the, everything that's, you know, easy for them. Mm -hmm. And some people have to work for it. Right. And, you know, so it's if, uh, you know, e either one of them can succeed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, if you, you can get, like say, you get out of it, what do you put into it? Yeah. Yes, sir. I can't imagine in the next 10 years what it'll be, the technology and who knows, they might just sell arms that you can just put on that just get you <laughs> there every time. Who knows? <laughs> yep. Uh, you actually say, who knows about that? But it's, uh, you know, it, I tell you what, it, it, it's pretty cool to see the how it all as you know. Oh yeah, involved, uh, right? Involved over the last mm -hmm. thirty years. Yeah, you've seen it all, yeah. I'm sure. Seen, yeah, you, I mean, nobody else has won eight consecutive titles other than Speed, and the only reason he won it is because he won it with you. Well, and and I mean that's that's pretty cool. I mean, you've won eight consecutive titles at the NFR. How how many times have you won the average? I've only ever I've won the average one time. Yeah, I went for six years and I roped sixty steers in a row by two feet, uh -huh. wow. and I had never won the average. And I think the seventh year, the worst I ever roped at the NFR, I missed two or three, roped a couple of legs, and I won the average that year. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. That is that is crazy to rope sixty steers by two feet. And then the year that you miss a couple, you win the average. Exactly. And, you know, that thing's – man, that average had had stayed forever, and it's been beat the last two years. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's it's kind of crazy how that happens. But you also have won the steer open. Mm -hmm. Well, I've made the steer or open You made the steer open finals, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yes, sir. You made the steer open finals, and uh, that's a completely different event than what you're normally doing. Right. Well, like I said, when I was a kid, I, I was headed, mm -hmm. and I loved to rope horns. And, you know, it got there in the, my career. I was around T. Woolman. All, I roped with him, lived mm -hmm. with him for five years. You know, and then there was uh, a lot of, of uh, you know, I was always at the ropings with him. Mm -hmm. We'd go to the rodeos and team rope and he'd steer rope. So I was like, oh, so I started thinking, you know, I wanted to do it. Yeah. And I wanted to always think about, I wanted to uh, do an event that I didn't have to have a partner for. Mm -hmm. And just to say I did it one time. Yeah. And then I, I roped with Trevor Brazil one mm -hmm. year. And, uh, you know, I had a lot of good friends that, like, T was good. Trevor's was great. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and um, a, a guy, Alan, he oh, uh, yeah. was with me a lot. So I was around the best guys in the world, and they helped me a lot. Yeah. So I, I was very fortunate there. That's awesome. So did you buy you a steer trip and horse, or did you just borrow one of your buddies when you steer tripped? No, we I, uh, we uh, I started out. I rode one of T's old ones, uh -huh. and then we uh, actually, uh, you know, I bought two or three, and then actually I had a uh, hill horse, mm -hmm. and Corey Coonster actually rode him at the NFR when he was four years old. Oh wow! And his name was Gambler, and he was he was a great hill horse, but he's always very very strong. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I actually traded him off, and then about two three years later. I had a chance. I traded back for him. Mm -hmm. My wife asked me, "So, what do you, what do you, you, you and that horse don't get along? What do mm -hmm. you?" I said, "I'm going to make me a steer horse out of him." Mm -hmm. And he is, I mean, was a perfect size, could run. Brandon Beers actually won the first round at Fort Worth heading on him. He oh, got wow. where he's good to head on. So, you know, I like, you know what? I'm going to make me a steer horse. And so, there's a good friend of mine, Tommy Blesson. Mm -hmm. He's trained a lot of uh, Trevor Brazil's steer horses. Yeah. And I took him over to him. And within two months, three months, I had me a steer horse and made the steer on finals on him that year, won Pendleton on him. Oh, uh, that's awesome. Yeah. So it was, that's I mean, awesome. uh, he took to it, and mm -hmm. he was 17 or 18 about that time and yeah. just a, and, and loved it. It was yeah. a great horse. And, yeah. and Tommy was so good at built, making them. Making them. Right. What, what was your favorite hill horse you've ever owned? Well, I've had them three really good ones. Mm -hmm. I've had Roni, Chili Dog, 
and I had a, um, a gambler. Yeah. But it's them three horses, every one of them was different. Yeah. You know, Roni, you could ride him into NFR, the BFI, he was good. You know, like Chili Dog was probably the nicest horse because mm-hmm. he was broke. Yeah. You know, he'd been ranched on, mm-hmm. just wanted to get along. You know, like Roni, when I first bought him, he would buck you off. Yeah. I mean, he, but I was, you know, 20 something years old. Mm-hmm. And if I was going to El Paso that night to the rodeo, he'd be saddled when I left Lano. Yeah. I mean, he was, he was just tough. Yeah. And, you know, but he was, the, you know, good. Mm-hmm. You know, you just had to stay on top of it. Yeah. And then Chili Dog, he was just wanting to be good because he'd mm-hmm. been ranched on and, and, and just, you know, been done something other with other than just Serena. And then, you know, Gambler, he was, just, he, the older he got, the better he got. Yeah. So it's, you know, I've had some good horses. Or, but, oh, you're good. You can right. answer if you need to. No. So, but it's all about, you know, just, you know, having good horses and, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, it's fun. You know, like now the year the horse I rode today, he's six years old. Mm-hmm. I seen him up here at the BFI and in the 15. Yeah. And the horse I had was a really, really nice horse. I rode up here in the BFI and we trained him and mm-hmm. he's a dual rate, but he was just a little bigger yeah. than what I, what fits me. Mm-hmm. And so... I decided after the uh, like uh, after the BFI I was going to sell him, and before I got back to Texas, I'd sold him and bought this little young horse. Yeah. And uh, so uh, I really like this horse. He's mm-hmm. got good foot speed, and he's he's cool. You know? Yeah, he looks really cool just watching him on the dummy. Yeah, that was. I mean, yeah, he looks like him. he's a he's a born athlete. Right. He's uh, I, he's a uh, met- me- I think metallic cat. Yeah. And they said that he's a. a Dean Tufton told me I had the best bred heel horse in America. Oh, really? I guess he's out of a really nice mare. Yeah. Oh, nice. And so, and they would know. I mean, I'm I'm not kind of in, mm-hmm. in the middle of all that, but he is, and he said that mare was a really good yeah. mare. Yeah. Would you say it pays to have, like, good horses? Like, I mean, I, I didn't grow up rodeoing or riding or really mm-hmm. knowing much about it, but you hear, like, uh, um, what's the, is it Charmaine? That bought that horse from a cell oh, barn. Yeah, games. scamper. Like, you know, does it does it pay to buy like real good bloodline or I guess if you're into breaking horses and stuff, like would it be I don't know, like is it Well, you know to me, if you have a a lot of it, I mean, yes, I think the bloodlines is huge. Right. But I, I think a lot of it comes how they're started, how mm-hmm. they're how they're first going. And how their foundation is. Yeah. You know, like this little horse, he has a foundation. And when I bought him, he'd only been to two ropings. Oh, yeah. wow. And uh, he, that that day and one other one. and But he'd been hauled around mm-hmm. with a lot of cuttings and things like that. Right. And But the other thing is, is like that horse is so broke. When I, I, I he adapts to me because I, I can show him. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and he's, uh, he kind of, the cool thing about him is, you know, they've, worked him and done so much they got him where it's like i push him instead of having to pull on him yeah you know he's like he's crawling and not yeah you know, run. not running off yeah. so that's you know when they're like that and they're broke you can actually show them and do something with it right what uh what was one of your favorite wins that you've that you've ever done oh you know the spe- it had to be the first world championship you know because yeah. that's what i've worked out all my life and wanted to mm-hmm. do you know, the funny thing is all this whole deal is there's a lot of, uh, I, and I don't never really understood this, you know, a lot of people want to be a fireman or something. They want to be mm-hmm. a policeman Police or officer. something. Yeah. And I, I always wanted to rope. Yeah. And I just, I remember setting, we had a, uh, oh, there was, a, after I won the world the first time in 97, there was a, uh, we had a rope in every Tuesday and Friday night. I grew up at Electra just south of here. Yeah. And then we we were roped over Tuesday and Friday night mm-hmm. every every week, and there, there we was watching NFR had a TV at the NFR. I mean, out this it wasn't an indoor arena; it was outside. Yeah. And we had a bench set up. And we was all watching the, the NFR. Yeah. And about and then after I won my first championship, they had a party for me in Electra. Uh-huh. And so I go back to this party, and they have a and that this man gives me a picture. It was me. I was a little boy, and I had a rope over my shoulder. 
with a Watch toboggan the on. And my dad and all the guys were all sitting around. Somebody took the picture, and we was all sitting there watching the NFR. Oh, that's man, crazy. that is that's so That's kind cool. of a cool picture. That's yeah. awesome. Uh -huh. That's crazy. Do you still have that picture? Oh, yeah. Oh, you'll, have you'll have to send it to us so we can put it on this so people yeah. can see it. I'll, when I get home, I'll see if I can take a picture of it. Okay. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So you've lived in Lano for quite a while. Mm -hmm. How long have you lived in Lano? You know, I've been, lived there since 89, 88, 89. Eight, maybe 88, 89. Okay. I made the NFR the first time in 90, and I lived, lived there then. Yes, sir. Real quick, we want to interrupt and talk a little bit about our sponsors, Alliance CPA Full Service Bookkeeping, Payroll, and Taxes. They know about the farm and Rodeo World, too. For all your rodeo write-off needs, give them a shout, 479-321-1043. And also, Three Sevens Ranch, located in Weatherford, Texas. Are you mounted to win? If not, look no further than Three Sevens Ranch to find the highest quality head, heel, and breakaway horses on the market. Be sure to watch out for the new apparel line launching soon. Three Sevens, where attention to detail matters. This year in Vegas, we'll be having a live show at the Plaza Hotel and Casino Convention Center at 1 p.m. daily. Come stop by, check out our merchandise, and kick it with us. See you all in December. What's something that you want people to know? You know, the, some some things that I like nowadays, you know, you know, everything changes the older you get. Mm -hmm. You know, and like my daughter's doing really good. I'm really enjoying watching her and my yeah. wife's behind her. And, you know, it's it's funny how things, cha times change your life when used to uh, everything was all important about my roping and, mm -hmm. and the horses and mm -hmm. things like that. And now today it's still important. But it's not. It's more important for her because you want her to succeed. Right. Yeah. And then the other deal is, you know, like I've been doing. I've got a website, mm -hmm. Get Rich Rodeo, and been working on it. You know, and I, I I like it because it's it's not just team roping. Yeah. I'm gonna get a calf roper. I'm gonna get a you know somebody in every event, different mm -hmm. events. Uh huh. You know, so you can uh, you know it's not just team roping. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah that's awesome. Um. What is what is one thing that you see the lower number guys do that is kind of like the the main thing that you see that they do that they need to change? Well, it's like I talked about today when we was out there. I, I think it's how they practice. Mm -hmm. You know the you know I've practiced every way you can. Mm -hmm. Speed and I would run 100 120 steers a day, and uh, and. That was good. Yeah. At the time, that's what we needed to do to accomplish what we wanted to. Yeah. Yes, sir. But today, though, I don't think the horses are built for that. Mm -hmm. And you know, like I would have six heel horses and run. You know, I'd run fifteen steers a piece. You know, oh. mm -hmm. and maybe swap or four, or four of them. And you know, mm -hmm. I I had you know good horses and I got good quality practice. Yes, sir. And to me, it's like I see, but it's how they practice. Yeah, you know, mo like I said today, when I go to s somebody's house that I don't know, most of them they say how fast their steers are. Mm -hmm. That is the worst thing you can do. You know, you know, you need a few fast steers and run one or two. Yeah, you, know, you need slow ones. Score some. Get your horses right. Rope, yeah. rope the machine or the hillomatic. Mm -hmm. Get them thinking about it. And you, quality is better than quantity. Yes, sir. It's better to rope five steers right than it is mm -hmm. fifteen the wrong way. Right. Yeah. That the saying uh, "practice makes perfect." I think perfect practice makes perfect. Well, it goes a long ways. Yeah, you know, and, and you have to be consistent with it. Mm -hmm. You know, and that, that's one thing. Chris Cox is a good friend of mine. Oh yeah, and he helps me with my horsemanship. Mm -hmm. And it's one of those things. And he tell he's always told me, he says your 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 horsemanship's good, but you're not consistent with it. Yeah, and and that's what I've worked on is being consistent, doing the same thing over and over every day. Mm -hmm. You know, I work, work them horses, work them on the machine. Then I rope a few slow steers, rope a couple fast ones, and then come back and score some. And people, everybody don't really understand is them horses have to be good in the box. Yes, sir. It all starts there. They, when they're good in the box mm -hmm. and you got them and they're just relaxed and leave, you can place them and put them anywhere you want to, wherever that steer goes. Yes, sir. But if they're pulling on you when they leave the box, mm -hmm. it's going to be worse when you get to the steer. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yeah, I think like you know, not coming growing up around it and stuff. Like I've spent more time trying to understand team roping just because I've roped a little bit here and there. But you know, like I've just going with Cody used to work for Alan Bach and just like him. It's just interesting seeing different the different styles of teaching. Like you know, he mm -hmm. talks about mostly talks about your tip controlling your tip, mm -hmm. and then you talk about you know you hear someone else about being in position a specific position and even roping the dummy. It's like. Cody's like, you need to make sure, like, 
because for me, I'm just like trying to rope it fast, but then I'm creating bad habits. And then it's like, I can, if I became a good roper on the ground, then it's completely different when I get in the saddle, like working with my horse and everything, you know, mm-hmm. like working as a team with my horse and all that. So it's interesting for me looking and understanding and watching and learning more about it, right. like how, how much that goes into it. Like mm-hmm. you said, you know, just watching you in the clinics talk about yeah. controlling your horse and just like backing him up and stopping him. And, and then when he rests, rest him in position, like just those type of little things like that to help you become greater at, at roping because it like all them little things, they add up in the end and until it's ready to go, you know? Right. You know, and, and the, the one thing that's pretty cool that nowadays we're talking about technology, like, uh, speed he's invented the speed trainer mm-hmm. you know now you can go from the ground to like his machine right and then steers you know that's a that there's a gap between you know right there yeah and there so is. that and the thing about it is fills that gap it fills that gap yeah you know so and so anything you can emulate with a horse and, and plus it's safe mm-hmm. you know when you're learning to rope and ride right sa- safety is a big factor yeah yes sir so you got some sponsors on your shirt. Mm-hmm. Um, who's kind of the guys that help you keep going down the road? Well, you know, I, I've had some great uh, partners over the years. You know, i am very been very fortunate. You know, I, I've been with Yeti for 10, 12 years now, uh, Reliant Ranches. You know, they're, uh, they've been he, uh, very good friends of mine. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's I, I have, you know, a lot of, you know, that's – you know, you think when you're quit rodeoing that they don't they don't want to be a part of you no right. more. Yeah. But you know, like uh, Fry Electronics, they're they're uh, good friends of mine. They're out in California. Yeah. But I have two of their horses at home, uh-huh. and they come and they rope. You know, when and, uh-huh. uh, and the I do a lot more today for the sponsors for my friends and sponsors. Yeah. Than and I do when I was rodeoing yeah. because yeah. I have time to now. Right. Yes, sir. You know, and you know, so with Cinch has been around forever there. I think they're part with y'all. Yeah. yeah. They're, we love they're, this. We love Cinch. I, I love their clothes. They oh, yeah. take they're, care they're, of you, man. Man, they're, we went we went to the Cinch factory uh last week or a couple weeks ago. Mm-hmm. And man, we got a bunch of clothes. Right. And my parents were there. They hooked my mom and dad up. I mean, oh. and they care for the you the the people that are on their team right. you know they're your family you're not just somebody that's you know you're wearing their here to shirt. Yeah. you know help support them i mean that's what our goal is all of us to you know to support the company that supports us but i mean it's awesome to to be in that big a company and they make you feel like family right you know and uh it, it's amazing you know like say how good they fit mm-hmm. you know and they have clothes that fit everybody. Yeah. yeah. And now they're putting on the finals. Uh-huh. So there's just adding more yeah, money to the finals. finals of these cowboys and cowgirls getting down the road. So Right. You know, and like I say, some of the other folks that help me, is, you know, like I, I love, I mean, I use classic ropes. Mm-hmm. And and they, to me, George McQueen is the best rope maker in the world. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's great. He's, he, you know, I can call him and, you know, and I had a neck surgery and, I couldn't use the same ropes I always used, and yeah. and he had me some ropes that fit me, and he and it doesn't matter what rope that Classic makes or or uh, Rattler, I could use any of them ropes if that's the only, if they only had one rope. Yeah, and their ropes are so good and they're consistent. Yeah. Yes, sir. You know, so you know, but there's, like I say, you know, I have a friend of mine uh, owns Martindale Feed Mill, good friend, and uh, you know, and uh, we try to do it every year. He comes down and he brings some of his clients, mm-hmm. and we rope with them and do some things. And yeah. the cool thing is, one of the coolest sponsors that I've had forever is Bloomer Trailers. Oh yeah, yeah. that was the really first guy he, they ever mm-hmm. he ever did That's anything awesome. with. Randy did. Yeah, and so uh, you know, so I've had you know, I'm very, I'm very fortunate. Yes, I've sir. Got, you know, I I wouldn't say that sponsors they're good friends of mine. Yeah. You know, and and we've had to you know, grow, grow, you know, to know each other mm-hmm. and be friends over the years. Right. That's awesome. Uh-huh. Yeah, I love that. It's, I just love the support. It just seems like everybody's willing to help, you know, even though you're, it's like the guys, like bull riders, they're pulling the rope for their, you know, their buddies that are, right. you know, everybody's cheering for everybody. Everybody wants to be the best. Everybody wants to pitch in and, and share. And especially when sponsors are, are there helping you get down the road too, it means a lot. So. Right. Yeah. You know, like, you know, today, I mean, like I say, there, I still have, you know, 
lot of guys. But like I say, I have actually time now to help them. Right. Yes, sir. That's what's cool. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, we get to re repay them, pay them back a little bit. Yeah, especially yeah. if they hung on this long. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So if somebody wanting to like have you at a clinic or uh, have a private lesson or something, uh, how do they get a hold of you? You know, the thing about it is nowadays is the Facebook does everything. Mm -hmm. You know, just uh, I have a, a man that helps me with it. So it's one of those deals. Just uh, message you on Facebook. Me on Facebook, okay. and then uh, then I'll call and tend to it. Okay, oh. sounds and then, great. And then your website that you have coming with all your training videos. What's mm -hmm. that called again? Get Rich Rodeo. Okay. Get Rich Rodeo. Yeah, so keep an eye out for Get Rich Rodeo if you're interested in, in uh, learning more and getting some tips on how to become a better roper or rider. So yep. yeah. So the the way we end our show all right. is with a song. All right. So what is the first song that comes to your mind? <laughs> first song that comes to your, my mind? Mm -hmm. We all got to sing it too together. Oh, yeah. It's got to be something Jake Hooker. Jake Hooker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's going to be in Lano tomorrow night. Oh, you're going to you're going to go listen watch, to him, ain't you? Watch. He's a good friend of mine. He's nice. Jake Hooker, is he the one that sings uh, Rodeo Time? Time to get, time on to get down on down That's the only one I know, That's so it. we'll probably have to sing that one. Yeah. You know that one, Cody? Yeah. Okay. All right. I think so. I'm going to let y'all sing. No, you got to <laughs> sing with <laughs> you us. You got to sing with <laughs> us. Yeah, this is yeah. this ain't a two-man show here. All right, here we go. Can we play Rodeo Time? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Got to get her on down the road. Dale might get mad at us. I honestly don't know if I know this too well, and there's no lyrics, so... Look for me downtown <laughs> Anytime after the band starts playing I'll be around I'll park my two-horse trailer okay. Up at the rodeo grounds And I'll start blowing <laughs> I'm a rodeo man There we go, that's all we know well, we appreciate y'all checking in, sticking around. And listening to another episode of the Everything Rodeo podcast, we want to thank eight-time world champion Rich Skelton for coming on the show and coming to the All-Star Finals. Thank y'all. I enjoyed the week. Thank you. Got the whole folks on my side, gonna win top money. I'm a rodeo man.